But here's the thing with Miles Bridges. He's intriguing us right now. He mm-hmm. dropped 38, right, in a very high-profile game on Monday. But you look at his last 14. Seven of those games, he's been under 20. So you say to yourself, that, that, that combination of the power and the shooting, you now have a platform against a hot team with two young forwards. You've got to outplay them. Miles Bridges has to be the best player on the floor. He can't just be good. He has to outplay Jason Tatum. He has to outplay Jalen Brown. Put a stamp and a signature on who you are right now as three young guys entering their prime in the Eastern Conference, all playing forward. Miles Bridges excites us some nights, but other nights he's quiet. I need him to be that Miles Bridges that can take over a game and be the guy we're talking about the next morning. If that happens, Charlotte can win. It's going to be a high-scoring game, so Miles Bridges has to come out with that mentality of I'm going to take these two guys on tonight, and I want people talking about me tomorrow, not Jason Tatum. Hornet Celtics for you. What about you, Perk? Well, I heard Legs talking about Garland yesterday and giving the Cavs a lot of credit. I'm looking forward to the Bulls, the Cavs and Bulls matchup because there is Garland. Look, he's becoming must-see TV. And I know he has the assists and the numbers, but you have to watch him. His handle is something beautiful to watch. But along with how the Cavs are committed on the defense, defensive side of things, and can I give some credit to Kevin Love for riding it out, for being the, the, uh, uh, a true leader and a veteran, coming in off the bench, accepting his role. And, and Bickerstaff has done a phenomenal job. The Bulls right now, they kind of need a win. They've been in the slump, but this Cavs team is not going anywhere. And Woj, you, you said you're tuning in for the, the Bucks game again tonight. What, what, what are you looking for in that game? Yeah, Grizzlies, Milwaukee. Milwaukee's lost six of eight games. Mm. They're at home. And a Memphis team with John Morant, and, you know, they're out four perimeter players. Dylan Brooks is already out with that injury. You know, but you've got Kyle Anderson, uh, Desmond Bain, and then today, uh, Tyus Jones all in COVID protocols. Mm. And so you kind of keep stacking that deck against uh, uh, John Morant. You see, can he go into Milwaukee? And, and win even with all those guys out. I want to add one thing real quick to the Cavs, too. People need to pay attention to this right now. Over the next 20 games, they play one team with a better record. Wow. One. That's tonight. <laughs> and that's a Chicago team without Zach Levine. You, you mm. sold me. So you if you're the me. Cavs, I'm tuning in. you better do your work right now. It would not be out of the question to see the Cleveland Cavaliers in the second spot in the Eastern Conference going into the All-Star break based on who they're about to play. All they have to do is beat the teams they're supposed to beat over the next four to five weeks. And they might end up as a two seed going into the well, break. Listen to wow. Tim Osteen over there preaching right now. Well, you know. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.